who's next in the hot seat, or maybe I should say, who's bad? He's bad. <laughs> who's bad? What am I talking about? I am talking about Warren Corrett. He is here with us. Thank and you. And you are with BASIC. Yes, the so, Black and African Diaspora Special Interest Group. Yeah, so we're talking about this here at NACAC mm -hmm. this year because I am clearly representing... H-U. H-U, you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Exactly, okay, right? the real HU, I know. <laughs> the real know. HU, right? Yes. But it's interesting because oftentimes we don't have a lot of representation mm -hmm. um, and we're really trying to close that gap and that's your mission, that's your focus. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about what you're doing and why you're here. Wow, so here as an Associate Director of College Counseling at Episcopal High School, really to get the new knowledge, the nuances of what's going on in higher education. But one thing that's really dear to my heart is the special interest group. It's an instant connection of family. Um, it's for folks who are of black and the African diaspora, hence the name, and it's educators who are either college counselors, working within higher education, CBOs, um, Anybody, you, you can come as far as like being affiliated with us. So we specialize in multiple things. If anything, it's an affinity space. When you walk through the door, it's like you're coming home to homecoming. Everyone knows you. If not, it's not something random to say hello and meet a stranger and make a new friend. But we're really about a lot of things. HBCU awareness is huge. I think that's one of the biggest gaps in higher education right now is letting students of color know that there is a place for them where they can be nurtured and get the best education as well as other PWIs in the country. We focus on mentorship um, and just anything within the profession that's affecting us as black folks and also the students that we serve, so. You know, it's interesting that you said this because um, my, my youngest daughter who attends Howard, she's okay. a senior there, uh, but she uh, graduated from a boarding school in- uh, I work at a boarding school, so I know <laughs> all about it. Yeah. In Claire Yes, yes, you <laughs> so know. She, she graduated from Montverde and then when she went to Howard, mm -hmm. she said, mommy, I feel like I'm at home. Yeah. And it's interesting because, you know, um, she grew up in an organization that, uh, that we have been involved with, Jack and Jill of America, and surrounding, giving her an opportunity to have inclusivity mm -hmm. around people that look like her, but also aspire to do more and, and be better, right? Mm -hmm. So when she got there, exactly what you said, having that experience at an HBCU gave her an opportunity to feel like she was nurtured and loved and support it, mm -hmm. that she probably felt like she would not get at a PWI. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are watching, are not familiar with PWI, that's predominantly white institutions. So talk to me about why that, um, that, that feeling of home is so, so vitally important for those students. It is. I mean, if you look at the country at this point, coming off of a contentious election, um, coming off of George Floyd, his murder, and also the verdict coming with that, there was a drive amongst African-American students around the country who wanted to go to places where they felt safe and they felt nurtured. You know, as a product of, you know, two HBCU alums, the importance of education was always instilled in me in my household. But really, you know, when you show up on that campus, I always tell my students this, when you get a picture, you always look for yourself or people who look like you. And there's nothing like walking into a room where you can see that diversity, even amongst people who look like you. That's important. And being in a place that will push you, that will nurture you, pick you up when you fall, but also uplift you, it's important. It's super important. The theme this year is creating change, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What are you doing with that organization to create change and that element of audience? I think it's awareness. I think really bringing awareness about the issues that affect black and African-American folks around this country to our SIG and also bringing those issues to the forefront for our colleagues in the profession. So we are not you know, shy about expressing our feelings, our sentiments when it comes to things that affect us as folks in the profession and the students we serve. So we are constantly, we put out newsletters that showcase not just readings, articles, job postings, um, just anything that's just on a hot topic. We did a, how can I describe it? I'm having a moment. Let's see. 
when we um, got together, we wanted to interview black women who were in the profession. So we had an HBCU series where we interviewed nothing but four black dynamic women who are leading the change in a lot of HBCUs around the country. That was one of our most heavily attended programs via Zoom during the pandemic. On top of it, we did a program on who is the HBCU student in 2020. It was a series where we had folks from Arkansas Pine Bluff, Arkin, um, who else, Alcorn State, Morehouse College, Tuskegee, where we had those folks just talk about what are we doing to recruit African-American students and what that looks like now in a new era. Mm. So it was important. Speak to that new era as you're recruiting. Are you utilizing or how are you utilizing technology, innovation, and creativity? Because Ooh. we're a digital world right now. So you've got to grab them at the top. Are you doing some TikToks? Come on. I wish. <laughs> like, I can dance, but I'm not on TikTok with my kids. That's a big no-no. <laughs> but at the same time, I think really being nimble and flexible and accessible. Those are the three things that folks need to be doing at this point. You know, we're coming off of year two with COVID, and students are tired as far as sitting in front of a Zoom and really trying to get all that education on who this school is and what they're doing. So being creative and nimble. I mean, for myself, I'm always pushing kids to do as much virtual touring as they can, but also now that um, admissions counselors are coming back through our doors, creating that relationship or reaching out on your own to say, hey, can I have a conversation with you? I would love to know more about your school, what they're offering. Um, it's, I'm trying to be as creative as possible, but that's, that's really a hard question <laughs> when it comes to it, because it's like, okay, what Think more can we the do? Box. Think outside the box. Yeah. Okay. Last couple of questions here. So you're here mm -hmm. at the 2021 conference. What do you expect to gain or bring out from this conference? Ooh. And take back to your students. The biggest piece is learning a lot about the new policies that are going on within our, our you know, our profession. Test optional has been the biggest, hottest thing um, as far as opening up the door where schools are being more crafty with their talk, classes. Talk to me, I'm sorry for interrupting. Talk to me about that test optional. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, the expert. Uh, so really last year with the cancellations of tests across the country, it was hard for students to just have a chance to take that test, the ACT and the SAT. So what schools decided to do was, okay, we're not going to look at you with your test score, we're gonna look at every other aspect of your application. Who are you really is the question, besides what you do on a Saturday. Because not every student tests the same. Not every student tests the same and not every student is a great test taker. But what you do in that classroom Monday through Friday, for those umpteen weeks through the year, that reveals who you are. What your teachers write about you as a leader, as a student, your college counselor, the activities, where you spend your time, longevity, consistency, and passion. That's what was making up the sweetness of the application process. And in a sense, you saw record amounts of first-generation students and students of color having access to schools across the country where they have been disenfranchised for years because of a test score. So now that that has changed, and a lot of schools are holding on to that for this year, I'm just trying to get the goods. What's the policy? How are you evaluating students? How will my students be looked at in the process? What can they do to stand out? And more importantly, how are you taking care of them when they get there? Especially coming off of a contentious year with COVID and everything else. That's a big so risk. test optional, I think it changed the game. I really did. And it was awesome to see schools stepping out on faith and doing something different and judging students in a different light. I love it's that. It's groundbreaking. I love it. It is groundbreaking. That's a, a heavy load to bear, so good, it good is. for you. It is. Last question. Question. This is a fun question. Okay. We're almost done. Okay. Right? This is my fun question. It has nothing to do with whatever. So, and I love this one, so I think you're going to rock this one. So, I want to know if you had a theme song oh, no. playing when you walk into a room for the rest of your life, what would that theme song be and why? Make it good, Ooh. make it good, Warren, come Ooh. on. <laughs> you got me going through my, yes. my genres. Oh my God, because I'm a music connoisseur. That's hard to I, pick. I figured you were, so that's why I asked that question. Oh. So when I walk through a room. Every time you entered a room, you have a theme song playing. Anytime you walked into the room, what would that theme song be and why? 
I know what mine is, and I'm not going to tell you, but go ahead. What? The question's okay. for you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what would my theme song be? I am stumped. Like, I literally no! am. I'm just trying to go through my genre. And then you also want to be, you know, work. You know, I'm a hip-hop No, 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 no. I uh, want to know what your theme song would be. You're not going to let me leave without no. this. Uh. You gotta, I need it. I need it. And just put the guard down from work. What is Warren's theme song? What is it? Oh. <laughs> this is tough. I'm looking at my friends Let like, me help huh. you. Okay. Yeah, you give me yours. Okay. No, no, I'm not giving you mine. I think <laughs> this is going to be yours, but um, and, and now I'm not a singer. Okay? okay. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Okay, what, DJ what. Khaled. Every Maybe time you. I walk into the room, my hands go up. And, and they stay there. Out. Listen, and they stay I'll out. take that. I'll take that. You know, because that's what I'm all about winning. Who there don't want to win? Exactly. We, all we do is win. So right. thank you, Warren, for being here of at NACAC 2021. We're so glad. Thank you for making a difference. Thank you for making impact. Keep thank doing you. the work that you're doing. Thank you.